my most memorable moment is at Fulton Speedway one night. I actually had to, it was, it was July 4th, and I actually had to round up a couple guys just to go to the races with me because we were a rookie in the class and really weren't doing that good. And we uh, went up there and ended up winning the heat and the feature up there that night. And it was, it was pretty awesome to, to race against them guys. I, matter of fact, I think Roger Phelps finished second. Paul Jensen finished third. Paul Jensen was in the outlaw circuit for a long time. We raced with him. And uh, back in the day, it was, uh, it was so much fun being able to race on the drag tires, alcohol, different fuels. Uh, the racers were uh, different from the dirt circuit, so we had our own identity, and, and uh, they, were, they were great to race with. We had a lot of, a lot of fun, and I think we had more fun afterwards. Uh, I tell you, the, the, the people that you meet in the outlaw circuit and uh, how much fun it was back then, it was, it was awesome because after we got all done, everybody load up the cars and we got done early enough. We had three divisions that night. And it was early enough, you know, all the drivers would get together and have a couple cocktails afterwards. And it, it was just a lot of fun. Well, the tough guys, you had Donnie Wetmore, Roger Phelps, Paul Jensen. Um, there were so many different ones, uh, try to name them all. I mean, there was a lot of fun. Kenny Bell was in there back in the day. Uh, we had, we had, probably 30, 40 guys during the days, and there was a lot of good ones. You never know who was going to win on a given night. There was probably 15 guys any night that could win, and uh, it, was, uh, it was great times. I raced the Outlaw Circuit most of my time. I uh, had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, raced against a lot of good guys, and uh, back then it was a lot different than it is now. We uh, were all pretty close knit up that deal we all we'd all race and head to the local bar room and have some drinks afterwards and uh you know marshall wetmore really got it where it was a pretty strong organization uh she she really marketed it the drivers and uh between wetmore me and Padalek and jim mahaney and jj and she really got a fan base filled up uh where the fans it's like what they do with Brett Hearn and Billy Docker and Ward and them. Uh, she really got us filled up where fans wanted to come and see us.
Yeah, I'm Roger Phelps uh, from uh, Baldwinsville, New York. Uh, raced the Outlaw Circuit for, I don't know my total, I've raced for over 30 years, but uh, I raced the Outlaw Circuit most of my time. I uh, had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, raced against a lot of good guys, and uh, back then it was a lot different than it is now. We uh, were all pretty close knit up, knit deal. We all, we'd all race and head to the local bar room and have some drinks afterwards. And, uh, you know, Marshall Wetmore really got it where it was a pretty strong organization. Uh, she, she really marketed it, the drivers, and uh, between Wetmore and me and Padalek and Jim Mahaney and JJ, and she really got a fan base built up uh, where the fans, it's like what they do with Brett Hearn and Billy Docker and Ward now. Uh, she really got us built up where fans wanted to come and see us. Uh, we had a lot of good paying races and, you know, back then you could, uh, you know, buy used parts from like the NASCAR guys and we used to build engines that made over 700 horsepower and we had about 10 grand in them. And today a motor's 40 grand. So it's really, uh, it's really changed over the years, but I'm still involved with my son, Ryan, and, uh, we're still having fun doing it. It's just, uh, I, mi I miss the outlaw days. Uh, you know, we won quite a few races and, and it wasn't really something. Uh, I won 100 lapper at, at Fulton when I started in the rear and it was a Victoria qualifier, won it on the last lap over Wetmore. And me and him were like rivals. Uh, either you liked him or you liked me. And it always seemed to be one way or the other. So. But we actually didn't get along that bad, but we, we had our nights that it made it exciting. But uh, I like coming to Utica, Rome. They've, uh, they've always had good paying shows. Gene, Gene and the crew do a great job with it. And, uh, you know, we used to have a, Eric used to have a lot of mid-season or uh, mid-week shows that were three grand to win back in the 90s. You know, in uh, you know 80s and 90s, we used to have three grand to win you know, 100 lappers and stuff, and uh, you could actually do pretty good with that deal. So I miss it, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the guys here. Comes out the modifieds are racing at Utica Road. Jordy Button with the good start in the wheel car. He'll lead them out of turn two, out of the back stretch. Jordy Button, of course, was last night's winner on his full bit speedway. He's looking to make it two for two on the weekend. Roger Phelps already up to second spot. As he moves around Rich Price, here comes Randy Glenski to the inside of Roger Phelps as they race off of turn four. Phelps in second, Glenski trying to work his way to the inside. Jordy Button, your left one leader, trying to run away and hide from the outlaw modifies in this 25 lapper. Gordy out of Kirkville, New York, at one time was the all-time win leader of the Empire Super Strip Club. Gordy Button coming off his fine win last night at Bowman Speedway. Look at him, he's almost a half a straightaway ahead of Roger Phelps as Dan Barron takes that car into the pit. Phelps and Glenski a little closer that time through the corner. Glenski really gains on Phelps as he does on a lot of guys here on the circuit. As he goes into the corner, watch Glenski going hard, trying to work on Roger Phelps. Here comes the leader, Gordy Button by. There's Roger Phelps, Randy Glenski, fourth place car, Doug Fuller, good battle for fifth with Dale Plank and Teddy Lamb battling for that position. Glenski moves to the inside of Roger Phelps, takes the spot, now Phelps tries to get Glenski right back on the inside. They've reversed lines on the speedway, Glenski now on the outside, Roger Phelps on the bottom, they touch a little bit as they come off the corner, Glenski and Phelps battling for second spot, Phelps back up into second. As we have four laps completed in 25 lappers, Glenski again down to the inside, into the pit goes Jeff Sheely in the number 38. Gordy Button leading. There's the gap between second and third. Roger Phelps in the 99. Look at Glenski close down on him as they go in the corner. Actually, Roger Phelps closes down on the gap on Gordy as they go through two. But the power of the wheel car, the Mike Butler motor, pull it away a little bit for Gordy Button. Roger Phelps still running in second. Randy Glenski third. Doug Fuller is fourth. Dale Plank rounds out the top five as Roger Phelps begins to close down on Gordy Button as they work in a three and four. Here comes Glenski into the picture. Now low, really pitching it sideways. He really went in hard that time on Roger Phelps. 
could not get in the spot. Dale Plank is down on the inside of Doug Fuller for the number four spot on the speedway as the driver from Homer races with your points leader. There is Dale Plank on the inside. Doug Fuller working the top side of him. They're racing for fourth position. Remember, Fuller is your overall points leader. Dale Plank currently fourth in the overall standings in just his first year of running the overall points championship. As we watch Roger Phelps continuing to run out in front. He will see two flags this time as again Glenn Key goes in hard at the inside of Tom Kinsella. Two laps to go for Roger Phelps. Looking for his first Unicorn Speedway win of 1993. Tom Kinsella still runs in second. He's pulled away a little bit now from Randy Glensky. Doug Fuller begins to gain on Glensky for the number three spot. White flag will come out this time as Baldwinville's Roger Phelps has one more lap to go. The Freddie B's for own car. This is not the car that Roger owns. This is one originally he was going to drive on Friday night, but it's been an up and down season for Roger Phelps as the Baldwinville Bullet will take it into three and four for the final time. Tommy Kinsella about a car length and a half behind as he tries to pick up on Roger Phelps. They come down for the checkered flag. It's going to be Roger Phelps. Tommy Kinsella in second. Randy Glensky third. Doug Fuller fourth and Paul Jensen fifth. Then J.J. Michaels, Louie Michaels, Don Dates Jr., Johnny Parker, and Billy Whitaker. I'm Jim Mahaney, racing the Outlaw Circuit back in the day, and uh, we're getting honored on the 20th of August, and it's pretty cool. Uh, back in the day, it was uh, it was so much fun being able to race on the drag tires, alcohol, different fuels. Uh, the racers were uh, different from the dirt circuit, so we had our own identity, and and uh, they were they were great to race with. We had a lot of a lot of fun, and I think we had more fun afterwards. Well, the tough guys you had Donnie Wetmore, Roger Phelps, Paul Jensen. Uh, there were so many different ones. Uh, try to name them all. I mean, there was a lot of fun. Kenny Bell was in there back in the day. Uh, we had we had probably 30, 40 guys during the days, and there was a lot of good ones. You never know who was going to win on a given night. There was probably 15 guys any night that could win, and uh, it was uh, it was great times. A memorable story. Well, there was a memorable night. I remember I was racing against Paul Jensen and. And uh, Paul was always tough, and we were going down the home stretch, and we kind of come together, and I kind of got turned, headed right towards the home stretch wall. <laughs> and I know that I never lifted, and uh, it was a couple laps. I think I got back by him, so it was just one of them crazy things that happened. But uh, I mean, racing against Paul, Donnie, Roger, uh, they, those guys were all great to race against, and we we had. Like any time you're going to race, you've had differences or so on. But at the end of the night, we all came together, and it was it was it was great. I miss it a lot, and we'll never go back to it. But uh, it was great times. I mean, it was they were they were the best times. They were these are all right, but they were the best. It was it was different. It's uh, unless you were there, it's hard to describe. But it's we had a lot of fun. One more lap for Billy Whitaker. Driver out of Brewerton, New York. Started right in this division. The Ray Moore Chevrolet machine. He's got some slower traffic in front of him. I don't think it's going to matter. Billy the Kid Whitaker takes the win. First Whitaker up speedway win for Billy Whitaker. J.J. Michaels finishes second. John Barker Jr. third. Dale Plank finishes fourth. And John Ramsey in the 25R finishes in the top five.
It's Outlaw Circuit Racing at the Utica Rome Speedway, Route 5 in Vernon. Gates open up at 4 p.m. Racing starts at 6 p.m. every day. How you doing? My name is Ricky Breed. I run Outlaw Circuit. I used to run Brewerton Fulton most of the time. I run Utica Rome a little bit. One uh, night, John Keegan called me up to drive his 3K. I come down here in the third week in it. I, I won for him down here. It was a great feeling coming down to Utica Rome and running an Outlaw Circuit in that 3K car. The track's always been nice down here, and I love that Outlaw Circuit where you could run wherever you wanted to. Three tracks, Bolton, Burton, and Utica Rome. Favorite memory was down here winning that night in John Keegan's car. I actually give him the hat that night. I said, you better hang on to the hat because uh, we're going to need it in victory lane, and I ended up winning that night. That was pretty neat. I enjoy it. Like I tell everybody, there's worse habits than racing. I tell the younger generation, you know, that racing's a bad habit. Sure, it costs money, but there's a lot worse habits. And Utica Rome Speedway, I love it. I was, I learned to drive here. Yeah, there's one other night that I, I really remember, and I got a standing ovation for it. I, I got spun and flipped over coming out of turn four, broke an axle, and she landed on her wheels and it come in the pit, and we um, shoved an axle in it. There was no brakes on it, wired a roof on it, went out, started dead last in the Concy and won it. And I got a standing ovation that night. I mean, she didn't look too pretty, but she was fast. Jordan has moved up to second. She may have a shot at Stan Clark. They come in at three and four. The white flag will wave this time. Charlotte Jordan beginning to gain on Stan Clark as they come down the front stretch. One more lap to go. This is what it's all about right here. Somebody's gonna get their first feature win in a pure stock. Stan Clark up the speedway a little bit. Charlotte Jordan gonna gain on him. The Wolf set number 71 of Stan Clark. Trying to get the win through three and four for the final time. Nothing but a clean racetrack. We've got a brand new feature winner. It's Stan Clark. Charlotte Jordan finishes second. Gene Moser third. John Morrison fourth. And Steve Kateri finishes in the number five spot. Belden, driver of the 81 Pro Stock. Um, we were uh, we were here when the, the Outlaw Circuit days for driving the modified. Uh, we come in the modified class in '92. I was a rookie. My most memorable moment is at Fulton Speedway one night. I actually had to. It was it was July 4th, and I actually had to round up a couple guys just to go to the races with me because we were a rookie in the class and really weren't doing that good and. We uh, went up there and ended up winning the heat and the feature up there that night, and it was it was pretty awesome to, to race against them guys. I, matter of fact, I think Roger Phelps finished second. Paul Jensen finished third. Paul Jensen was in the outlaw circuit for a long time. We raced with him in the modifieds, and a lot of my outlaw circuit days was in the, they called them street stocks then, and uh, I tell you, the, the, the people that you meet in the outlaw circuit and uh, how much fun it was back then, it was, it was awesome because after we got all done, everybody load up the cars and we got done early enough. We had three divisions that night. 
and it was early enough, you know, all the drivers would get together and have a couple cocktails afterwards, and it, it was just a lot of fun. Not, not quite as technical it is, as, as it is nowadays, even in the pro stocks. Uh, very technical, costly. Um, I just have a, I've been, I've been around here a long time, and uh, I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, after the Outlaw days, uh, Eric Kingsley owned this one in Brewerton, and I believe it was Jim Ferlito and Chuck Trump that was running Brewerton at the time, before Harvey Fink took it over and they created the Outlaw circuit, the three tracks. There was still a dirt circuit existence, but we had our Friday, Saturday night track and all the same people ran there. Had a full field of cars in every division, and uh, never, never really cared about what was going on with the dirt circuit because we had so much fun in the outlaw circuit. Everybody racing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It was like, it was like part of your family. You were, you were with all these guys all the time. As Eldred got caught up with the slower car, Eldred and Holzheiser tag, and Jeff Pliss takes advantage of the situation to take the lead. Jeff Pliss, the 2L, the red car over at turn four is now your race leader as he comes down to the start finish line. Auburn's Jeff Pliss out in front with five laps to go. Well, Pete can't be out in trouble here on the front stretch as that car has some contact. Yellow flag comes out. Alton Palmer, Dan Yankowski also down at the inside of turn number four. Yellow flag is out with five to go. Here we can see what happened down in turn four. Eldred gets loose. Wow, Campion way up in the air. Alton Palmer spins, and then into the back of him is Dan Yankowski to bring out the yellow with five laps complete. Jeff Pliss looking for his first win of the season here at Utica Row. Green flag comes out. Both sides are to the inside of Jeff Pliss on the back stretch. Hulsizer at Pliss, Hulsizer with a little bit more horsepower as they go into turn three. Hulsizer on the bottom, Jeff Pliss going to go right back at him on the top side. Jeff Pliss up on top, Hulsizer down low, Steve Hulsizer leads on lap number 11. Jeff Pliss gets a good run at him on the top side, but Hulsizer able to hold off the armor driver. Ronnie Holmes has made his way up to third position. While Jim Rothwell battles with Ray Zemkin for the number four spot. Dave Hulsizer's got three laps to go as the Bridgeport driver looks for his second of the weekend. First at Utica Row. Ronnie Holmes is to the inside of Jeff Pliss racing with him for the number two position on the speedway. Pliss ran second last week. And right now he's trying to hold on to that position. This time around, two more laps are left to go for Steve Holzheiser and the rest of the sportsmen as Ronnie Holmes has taken second spot. And Jeff Pliss goes up in a pile of smoke over in one and two. Whole lot of smoke out of the Jeff Pliss car as he has a whole lot of trouble. And that was smoke coming out of the exhaust. Motor problems on the 2L of Jeff Pliss as he is coasting on the back stretch. 13 left complete, two to go. Nick Sweet looks him over, green flag with two to go. In the trackside, Napa Outlaw Sportsman feature. Gateri and Kevin Gale leading on each other on the front stretch. Dave Altizer driving away from Ronnie Holmes. These two drivers had, oh, so many races in the street stock division. And now Hulsizer and Holmes racing for the win of the Sportsman with one lap to go. Dave Hulsizer looking for his first two Unica Rope Speedway win of the year. Last Stammen game beginning to slow in the 35L. He's got a soft right rear tire. He'll take that car into the pits as your leader. Dave Hulsizer works his way into three and four for the final time. You see the margin between Hulsizer and Ronnie Holmes. Checkered flag is waving. Down the line, Steve Hulsizer with the win. Ronnie Holmes in second. Jim Rothwell in third, Ray Zipkin, I believe, in fourth, and Jim Smith officially in the number five position. So, ladies and gentlemen, your first feature win of the year in the sportsman division here at Utica for Bridgeport, Steve Holzheiser. Boy, 
boy, it's amazing how they changed, Steve. They used to boo you here, but congratulations on your first sportsman win here at Utica. Oh, thank you very much. Turned it out to be quite a weekend. Right, here they come down. There, we got them. We got everybody up. All right, that's a way to do it. We got some super race fans here at the New Utica Rome Speedway. All right, we're ready to go to work. The homework is done. The marbles are on the table. Everybody waving. Okay, that's got to make you feel just good all over, doesn't it? All right, what a good family sport. Love them all. Here we go. You know where your favorite is starting right now. Jacob on the inside. Walton to the outside. Bring him off for turn number four. We got a green. Here we go. Walton brings him around Ramsey. He's in and out of Belden. And then three goes 358 modified down in front. Walton is going to be a tough man to reel in. Just bring him off the point. The car number two, J of Jeff Walton, the kind of radio one of Brett Belden. The 25 of Johnny Ramsey. Michael's on way to the outside of Galinsky. Knocked up about six cars as he worked up through it. An excellent drive by Randy Galinsky on the outside of the speedway. Working to the outside. Here they come. Thundering down in front. The car number two of Jeff Walton along with the car number 81 of Brett Belden. The car number 25 of Johnny Ramsey. The car number 44. Of uh, Mike Jacobs, the 714 of Gordy Panic Button, the car number three of Tommy Kinsella, the car number 99 of Roger Phelps, the 31 of J.J. Michael, along with the five of Bob Savoy. Right there with him, a car number. 30, the 57 of Paul Jensen, the 32 of Louis Michael, the 74. Of Doug Fuller, the car number 77 of Dale Plank, the Randy Galensky machine. As they ride off the point, you'll throw a blanket over their six, seven, and eight position cars. They swing it off on the back of the Jeff Walton Burrito Brothers machine. The Sunshine, Sunshine Enterprises ride. It works down in front. Here they come. Breaking off of turn number four. Button goes on the inside of Ramsey. Ramsey shuts the door on him that time around. Walton, your race leader. The second stop belongs to 81 of Belden. Belden slips to the outside. Ramsey. And Button leaning and on each other off of turn number four. Here they come. Along with the car number three and Tommy Kinsella. We have a yellow all down in front. We got Dale Plank, Louis Michaels, and Billy Whitaker all together. Off the point. Kinsella lights it up, turns up the wick. And here we go. They work down in front. The car number two, Dale Jeff Walton rides second. Gordy Button is third. Michaels goes to the inside. Tries to grab that third spot away, and he might do it this time. The car number 57 of Paul Jensen right there with him. A couple big yellow cars going side by side. Nobody wants to give it up. Utica Roma, they swing him off the point. Kinsella is your race leader. Gut and button now. He tries to go to the outside of the speedway. J.J. Michael will stay low. He's got their idea on lane choice, that's for sure. They work on the back of the Jeff Walton machine. Everybody in good shape. As we are scoring lap number 18, coming into lap number 19 this time around. Kinsella is your leader. Three tires wide. As a 714 of Gordy Punch does a tourist pace on the back of the Kinsella automobile. The car number 31 of J.J. Michaels now works up on the inside of the wheels just gone out of supply number 714. Michaels to the inside. Button to the outside. As they come off the point, coming down with five laps to go. Five laps remaining. A battle throughout the, the whole feature. They work down the back stretch. The car number three of Tommy Kinsella running away. The car number 31 of J.J. Michael, the 714 of Gordy Panic Button. The car number two, J. of Jeff Walton, along with the car number 57 of Paul Jensen. As they bring them down in front, we're working on lap number 21. Good case right now. He's still working pretty much the side. Galinsky tries to the outside. Firing off the line is the car number 74 of Dougie Fuller. Dougie saves daylight. And he works down the back. The 77 of Dale Plank looks towards Pitt Road. We come down now, scoring left number 22. Working on the back. Whole lot of hustle. Jensen on the outside of Fuller. Right now we got a couple of good battles going on. Tommy Costello missing a good race with the 714 of Gordy Button and the 31 of J.J. Michaels working on each other. Off the point, they start to come. They'll be working lap number 23. Two laps to go. The mighty, mighty modified. J.J. Michaels and the back of 
Gordy Button. Gordy says not that time. If we come down now with one lap to go, lap cars will not be a factor on this night. This fellow just rim rise on the outside. Michaels and the kind of woo, 714 of Gordy Button. Come off high and went low, coming off of turn number four. Michaels had to back out of it. Michaels right there with him. They worked on the back stretch. The kind of two J of Jeff Walton right now riding in fourth. There goes Michaels on the inside, Gordy Button to the outside. Jacami Kinsella will be the winner. Who is going to be second? Who's it going to be? Gordy Button on this night. Well, the J.J. Michael will settle for third. Jeff Walton is fourth and still on down the line. In the 73. As they lean on each other. Now Reed shows his colors. Richie Breed up on the inside of Carey. Carey just drives right there with him. About a car length going into the corner. Chantel watching all this unfold in front of him. As we come around, the white flag is out. The white flag is waving. Here we go. Rub rail to rub rail. Carey, Breed, Chantel, Sweet. As they work down in front. Off the point they go. Ricky Breed has found quickness underneath the corners. He's found the low side. And Paul Carey is going to go high. Okay, New York Room. Here it goes. The final turn of the wheel. Here we come. Off the point. Again, Carey pulls a little bit to the outside. Ricky Breed goes up underneath. Who's it going to be? It's going to be Paul Carey on this night. With Ricky Breed is second, Chantel is third, Dick Sweet will be fourth, and going down the line. It's almost like you didn't expect it. Just a good run out there. Had to work for it. Just about as smooth as anybody in that class. You more or less picked the groove and stayed with it, Paul. Well, Ricky Miller got outside me there one time. I figured I better move my lane out a little better. I was going to be second. You was just a little bit more of the race track, right? Yeah. Just a bit. Anybody you want to thank, Paul? Oh, I want to thank everybody here who works on the car. They all know who they are.